Here's the story. You're going to get married. Y'all have a child. And together, you two are inseparable. One day, you and your fiancé decide to hang out with your family. While pre-gaming, your brother and partner get into a verbal altercation. And before you know it, you're on the ground and shots are fired. Baby brother has just killed the love of your life. While in your arms, you watch your fiancé take his last breath at the hands of a sibling, Trapping Anonymous. Think if I hold him and he listened to me, he'll say, okay, Pook, I won't do it. Okay, Pook, he, nothing. I hear my sister saying, Pook, get down. Lisa, get the fuck down. What's good? This is Trapping Anonymous. My name is Chris Stouts. Welcome back. Welcome back to yet another episode. Thank you for keeping the movement moving, keeping us viral, posting, sharing, liking, commenting, all the publications, the blogs that's, that's pushing us. And, uh, you know, super grateful. Uh, Trapping Anonymous, this, this thing started eight years ago. And um, what it's become now and what it is today, I'm eternally grateful to God. So I'm also eternally grateful for you guys. Um, if you have stories that you know, that should be covered on here. Reach out. I do right back. And um, let's get to it. Do remember the stories that you hear reflect real life. They're here to educate, entertain, and hopefully keep your little homie off the streets. My name is Chris Stiles, Travel Anonymous. Let's get it. How are you? Nervous. It's okay. Nervous is okay. Um, what's your What's your name and uh, why, why is your story important? My name is Talissa. You want the full name? Can nobody know the full name? Mm-hmm. Well, it is Talissa. Uh, for sure, I go by Lisa. That's too much. But um, why is my story important? Yeah. It's important because I lost someone that was very close to me, um, someone that I loved, someone that same, shared the same interests as me. I lost my fiance <clears throat> to gun violence, um, and a loved one did it. So I want to bring aware to bring awareness that. Okay. You you say you lost your fiance to gun violence and a loved one did it, but you were also there. Correct. If you could bring us back to that fateful day. From the beginning or from when that started, that moment started. I guess you could give us an overview of kind of what the day was, but then just tell us. What, what what happened? How did it get there? <clears throat> Are you going to edit some of this out? I don't mean to do this, but it's so much going through my head as you answer me these questions, and I didn't think I was going to feel this way. So when you want the beginning, do you want what caused this problem, or do you want just that day? Give me that day, and then we'll okay. go. Or then I'll circle back around. Okay. To you. Okay. Um, this day I just got off of work, um, this morning, that morning from, um, working a night shift <clears throat> and I'm supposed to be going to the South side to be, uh, going to my friend party in the South, you know, our South is kind of rough. It's rough, you know, but, um, anyways, going to the South side to my friend party and my brother calls me that morning, seven o'clock in the morning. Hey, Pook, you know, um, I got into it with my son. Can you come and get me? You know, it's got kind of rough. No problem. You know what I'm saying? I'm a people pleaser, you know, I love my family, so I'm gonna make sure. I'm going to check on my nephew, make sure my brother good, get him out the house. They ain't got no car, so come on, I'm going to pick you up. Have some douce, you know, we love douce. So uh, bring him over to my house. Um, call my sister, hey, you know, look, little brother got two with a nephew, so come by, let's, let's drink that smoke, you know, cheer him up, you know, because he's bipolar as hell. So she's like, okay, bet I'm coming through. So at this time, my fiance there, and he's like, you know, I'm about to head out, you know, I'm going to go take care of some business. And he's going to the party as well, so I'm like, okay, you know, just be back a certain time. And we'll go from there. So my brother all of a sudden decided he wanted to go, you know, like, where you going? You going to a party without me? I'm like, yeah, you don't know me to go to the city. Like, that's not your thing. Well, I want to go. I want to go. I'm like, shit, well, you know, you really can't go, but shit, let me see if you could go. My sister, I want to go. I want to go. I bet. Then let's go, you know, let's ride. So my guy, so we left, left the house, went back to get another fifth of Duce. Mm. Duce mm. is my drink. We get, we already working on our second do say, second fifth to do say. So um, just me and my brother. So um, my sister ended up leaving, she went home to get ready. So now it's me and my brother, waiting for my fiance to come. By the time we came back from the store, he was there. So I'm getting ready, um, you know, getting ready for the party. And so anyways, um, 
So anyways, you know, we getting ready to get, get in the car. You know, my brother's feeling a little, you know, intoxicated. So, well, not feeling, but he is intoxicated. So my guy says, hey, I need to make a run back somewhere else. We make a run. My brother driving reckless, real reckless. My guy's like, no, Pook, have him slow down. You know, I ain't with this driving reckless. So anyways, brother want to switch the car up or switch the seats. I'm like, bro, switch. We got the switch. He's like, no, nah, I can't. I I'm in my zone. You know, y'all just sit back, you know, talking bunch of big guy shit. So... We um, end up heading back down to the party now. Pick my sister up, everything's fine. We driving, you know, it's about six something. We five minutes away from the spot, five minutes away from the party. All of a sudden, I look at my rearview mirror and I see my brother, my guy talking. Now they already had previous, previous, um, you know. Um, beef, so beef, they're... yeah. So I'm seeing them talking, so I'm like, oh, hell no. You know, I can't find a place I'm going to anyway, so I pull over, hell no, y'all feel switch seats. Soon as I pull into the parking lot, my guy gets out, He's in the back seat passenger, my sister in the front seat passenger, she gets out. My brother gets out, he's behind me, I'm now driving, because we switched seats because he was being reckless before. As we switch our seats, as we all switch our seats, no one's supposed to get out the car beside these two people on the passenger side. I notice this door behind me opens. I'm looking from the back side, I see my guy getting out, he's kneeling down. I'm like, okay, he must be looking for his, you know, his phone or something, so why was taking so long? Now I'm realizing this door's opened up, I'm gonna click it. Let me unclick, let me unclick. I got to get to this guy because he owns something because I know my brother. He's on something. As soon as I'm getting out the car, it's like everything was slow motion. As soon as I get out this motherfucking car, my brother's in front of my fiance face. <laughs> he smacks him. So my fiance smacks my brother. He flies back, you know, and he already intoxicated. He threw, he threw. You know, we smoking, so, you know, there's a lot going on. So he smacks my brother, kind of flies back a little bit. So I grab him because I see my brother tussling with his fanny pack. He likes to wear a fanny pack. So I'm grabbing him like if you pull anything out, that fanny pack, I would never fuck with you again. That's more than enough time to think, right? To think that, okay, maybe I should just hit this nigga back. Maybe I shouldn't do nothing. You got enough time to think, my nigga, because I'm telling you, don't pull nothing out this motherfucking bag. Next thing I know is a shot fired in front of me. I'm dead ass in the fucking middle. It's another shot being shot from the other side. I'm thinking I can't watch that side. Cause if I want to this time with my fiance, I'm gonna be a dead motherfucker cause I know my brother gonna shoot me. Cause he have no heart, he don't just think sometimes. So I came from right there, so I'm better off holding him. Think if I hold him and he listened to me, he'll say, okay, Pook, I won't do it. Okay, Pook, he, nothing. I hear my sister saying, Pook, get down. Lisa, get the fuck down. I'm screaming out, no, no, help me. She's like, get the fuck down. I get down. I get out. Next thing you know, the shot stop. <clears throat> I hear a lady say, "Here's somebody over here. It's a body over here." So I'm like, "Fuck!" I run over to the side. Now we in Taco Bell Park a lot. I run to the side. I see him. He's face down. She's like, "Baby girl, don't touch him." I work in medical field. Everything that I learned and I knew went out the fucking window. CPR. Everything went out the window. Nothing, nothing. So I turned my wallet, I got to find a gunshot, I got to find where the shot is so I can apply some pressure. So my sister's now like, Lisa, Lisa, apply CPR. I'm like, I don't know, I don't know what to do. So she's on the phone calling the ambulance. I now hear my sister saying, no, no, please don't leave us, please don't leave us. My fucking car driving off. My brother's in the fucking car driving off, leaving us there, me and my sister and my fiance. I go back to him. And now he only took his last breath. Ambulance on pulled up, put him in. Can I go with? No. No, you can't go with. No, 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 no. They got to stay, you got to stay, answer these, answer these questions. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. Because in my knowledge, man, he's still okay. He's okay. They put us in the police car, took us to the precinct. There for eight and a half hours. I don't have their fucking system. Because I'm on computers, I'm searching. I don't got my phone, I don't have my purse. All my shit was in the car. I have nothing, so I'm on their system trying to see where I can find, locate my phone, whatever, whatever. Now, they say and say he's been nothing. They can't tell me nothing. They don't know nothing. So they finally let us go after eight and a half hours holding us. And as soon as they dropped us, dropped us off his home, they said, he's gone. Oh, you motherfucker knew he been gone, but okay, he gone. So now, where's my car? Where's the brother? Why y'all ain't got him? What's going on? End up finding my car. My brother parked at his house. 
and he's supposed to turn himself in because the detectives calling my phone. You know, where's he at? Where's he at? I don't know where's he at. I don't get y'all the address. Find him, look for him. Because this is not justice. This is not right. I'm on for the right. You know what I'm saying? I love him. I love my brothers. I love them fucking both. God could have lost them both. I could have lost myself. I could have lost my sister. We all could have been out there just laid the fuck out. So I love them both, but I'm, I'm for the fucking right. Excuse my French. So he finally turned himself in. And I feel a little relieved. You know, I feel like, okay. Turned himself in, okay. They held him for like four hours and let him out. They tell me that this motherfucker is self-defense. I don't know where the fuck you from, where I'm from. Nigga, you a op? You a snitch? Cause nigga, you don't, you got the fuck off. The house is self-defense when you should never got the fuck out the car. Tell me this, tell me that. How the fuck is that? I'm your sister, your big sister. Love you. Did, been, did everything for you and your fucking kids been there. How the, Make it make sense. No phone calls, no nothing to the family, nothing. And the family said, we forgive them. We forgive them. Whose family? My fiance family. Forgive your brother? Yeah, I said, we forgive them. And you were unable to? Hell no. I'm not. I'm not, because you had a time to think. And it's like, I feel like you finally got what you wanted to do. This is some built up rage. This is some built up shit. And you probably saw the opportunity and you seized it. Okay, there's so much to unpack here. Your fiance slapped your brother first. Uh -huh. And then your brother reaches for his gun. So who were you holding on My to? My brother. You was holding on to mm -hmm. your brother and your brother is already reaching. Mm -hmm. So it's to my understanding that both of them had guns. Mm -hmm. Both of them shot. Mm -hmm. Your fiance was just the one that got hit. Four times. Four times. And as your sister is yelling, get the fuck down. Shots is going off. Mm -hmm. How did it play out the other way? I thought about it. How did it play out the other way? How 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 would you feel about the situation then? I still would have been hurt, and if my fiance would have got out and smacked him and pulled the gun out, I feel the same way. But he don't. He's not he's hit. He's more of a fighter. Hands on. Hit me, you know. And I said the family would have been so mad at the fiance. Make sure he's in jail. Oh, he had to do time. Oh, he gonna do time. My mom would have fought it. My mom would have fought that shit. Hmm. But because he wasn't their family, you feel like they just sort of. It's injustice. It's unjustified. You know, right is right, wrong is wrong. You should never got the car. What you got the car for? What about the person that argues he can get out the car? If he wants to get out the car, it's just he didn't inflict damage or harm or he didn't strike first, right? Here we are. If, we, if we're going to, it's impossible to be completely objective about the situation because you were there. You were holding him, your brother, tight. You held your fiance as he took his last breaths. So if we're gonna re really look at this, mm -hmm. this incident, can we truly say that your brother wasn't in fear for his life? If you was in fear for your life, you would have got my personal space. Right? I mean, you got the car, got my personal space. You you were my space. And we just had some of those exchange of words in the car. Why are you in my personal space? You too close, you too close to me. Mm -hmm. You too close. So yeah, I must get the hell back. I ain't pulling no weapon on you, I smacked you. 
And this is already, no, he wasn't in fear for his life. He my fiance should be in fear for his life because they had past history, past altercation. Mm -hmm. You know, going back seven years ago, actually a little bit before that, um, when the fiance supposedly left something in my brother's car, my brother said it was his, and it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Then a young lady gets involved, and she says that my fiance says, suck his, suck his dick. And she tells my brother, then my brother tells me. But she was just wanting to make my brother jealous because she was some neighborhood little hoe. Mm -hmm. And wanted to have a family with my brother. So he tells me, luckily we all together. Boom, let's squash this. Cause what you mean? You told her to suck your dick and you, what, what's going on? Excuse my French, I'm sorry, but mm -hmm. being honest. So she finally says, no, 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 that didn't happen like that. So my brother, so my guy, my fiance says, we know bitch hoe, you know, cussing out her name. You always broke up my family, woo woo. Watch your fucking self, bitch. I will never let you for a ride again because it started with him asking for a ride to go to the mall, get our daughter some shoes. So my brother said, Stop calling her bitches. You and they put a hoe. So he said, Stop calling her a bitch. He's like, Well, you a bitch too then. This is what my fiance said. Well, you a bitch too then because you're very lying to your sister. Brother got the car with a crowbar. And this is how it started seven years ago. Okay. Wow. Okay. Bullshit. 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 All of it. What what is a just what would be a justifiable solution for you in this situation given the circumstances? Well, how much time for your brother? What would be what what would be a justifiable solution? At first, it would have been just showing sympathy or empathy. Wow. To the family and I. Wow. That would have been enough. Yeah. That I would love her. Mm. That would have been enough. Right mm. now, mad time, because mm. I feel like. Once you don't tap into that, it's supposed to make you a different person. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to come out different, want to be better, want to make a change, and you still doing the same shit. You still got the same ways, the same attitude. So right now, I want to get life. I love him get life. He don't got to wait with too much shit. And motherfuckers can get mad and say how they say I feel how they feel. But these are my feelings. That's my brother, my blood brother, mm -hmm. and that was my fiance. Mm -hmm. So. You gotta be accountable for your actions. Your family sort of has a history of violence. Yeah, yeah. Down to the women. What sort of one of the most intense situations that you would say your family has endured with this history of violence? My whole family, from the mother to my another brother to the brother who killed the fiance, fiance, his fiance, and my sister and her husband was all locked up because my other brother allegedly killed his girlfriend, which had involvements with the baby brother. Yeah, no, a tongue twister, right? He's like, what the? Okay, so there was a situation where the little brother and your older brother had a problem over a, a woman, mm -hmm. and your brother allegedly Excuse me. killed the woman. Mm -hmm. How? Like, I don't know exactly how, but I allegedly heard like she caught her with the baby brother sleeping together. Mm. Um, he was a truck driver, was a truck driver, so they in his truck. The brother pulled up with the other brother girlfriend, and sure enough, it was going down. And I read the article. He said he beat her with with his bare hands. Yep. And that was my favorite brother. Mm. Sorry, I know ain't no favorite, but that was my baby. But um, yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. He's still fighting that till his day. Yeah, yeah. They go to trial, I believe, um, next month. The whole family, except for me. Because you ain't involved in that. No. And it all comes back down to this little brother again. Yeah, the little fucking brother. 
the little baby brother. Yeah. You know, I know we, we want to always exact our revenge. No, but it's not like that. It's, um, you know, I think he had kind of an easy life. You know, he's a baby. Um, uh, um, he got pretty much everything he wanted, you know, so it was no need to maybe he was spoiled. If he didn't have his way, then he seeks revenge. I don't know, but, you know, I don't try to just blame everything on him because we're all falling for, for something, you know. We're not perfect, but... He could be very demonic. I mean, al allegedly sleeping with his brother's girlfriend, mm -hmm. which leads to this white woman mm -hmm. getting beat by this black man. I mean, I, and I put in the race because the optics. Yeah. I mean, this yeah. is how the world is yeah. going to interpret it to your situation comes along, rides along. Why was he even in the car in that first place? Mm -hmm. We should keep these two individuals as far apart from each other as possible. Why? Why? Even if he is having a, a, a effed up day. So what? They should have, would have, could have. <sighs> Sorry, you're right. How'd you meet your fiance? <laughs> Through my cousin when I was 13 years old. Um, we was just phone pass, talk here and there to each other, fall out to each other. Um, time went by, ended up getting married, me and my ex-husband, um, having kids. And then, ding, see somebody on Facebook came pop and see somebody on Facebook like, hey, I, inbox, hey, how are you? You remember me? Woo, woo, yeah, I remember mm. you. <laughs> yeah, I remember you. How are you? I'm married, got kids, you know, woo, woo. You know, um, well, I'd like to see you get up okay, because he used to come around the family, you know. He's always going to my grandmother's house, so he's a known, he was known. Um, we end up getting up, and I'm like, well, you know, I hope you know I'm married. <laughs> 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 you know, you know he's like, I know, you know. <laughs> I know this feels kind of <laughs> yeah. wrong, but, and you know. <laughs> next thing I know, we're kicking it and chilling, and then boom, we're at a freaking motel. Hotel, motel, Holiday Inn. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Yeah, funny but not funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, it's the truth. How did your fiance take you away from your husband? I mean, he didn't take me. I left. I left because the fiance just had it was it was the swag. Oh. It's the way he's to talk to me, and oh. it's the way that he's to treat people, like. He, he would see a homeless person, somebody asked for money, he'd give it to him, give him some food. It was always, he was very caring. I'm like, oh, my husband is nothing like that. He's just so mean. He don't know how to change a tire. He don't know how to do nothing. Just student collar type of guy, you know? <laughs> wore dress shoes. We just call him dresser. <laughs> he wore dress shoes. So, you know, I mean, the, you know, fiance, like I said, we known since 13, we connected. But he wasn't a bad guy. The husband? Your husband. He wasn't, but he wasn't a guy for me at that time. You know, it, I was changing, I'm evolving, and I would just, I don't know. I was really a step for mom. I didn't go out and hang out and party. Now I got up with an old friend, and you want to go where? Oh, my God, I don't know if I want to go there. But it sounds very fun. Let's go. <laughs> and next you know, hey, you know? So it, sound, it, it sounds to me like your husband got you in your purity. Yeah. In your purest form. Yeah. Almost like a virgin. Yeah. Was a virgin, yeah. Was a virgin, yeah. yeah. So that was the only guy you've ever been yeah. with, yeah. And got, yeah, all three kids, oh. yeah, yeah. So this new guy, cha ching, cha ching. <laughs> yeah. Here's 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 the thing. Here's the thing, and this is why I guess sort of like we're supposed to wait until marriage mm -hmm. for sex mm -hmm. and only have sex with one person, mm -hmm. right? Bull. Because so, <laughs> because as soon as we experience mm -hmm. it from someone else... It's a different thing. It's, it's over. A whole different, yeah, it's a whole different... Yeah, it's over with. It's so, over with. So you fell for the swag. I mean, again, I know him since 13 and he ain't nothing changed about him. Mm -hmm. But age, he's still the same, talk the same. Mm -hmm. So then I didn't want it. You too, uh-uh. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. it was, I guess it was more deeper in, 
it was, it, it would have, it was when he gave this homeless man a plate. He gave this homeless man a plate, and I'm like, oh, oh. and I'm, we connected, and he gave me a kiss on the cheek, and I said, oh my God, I felt something I ain't never felt from any man. And I said, I can't be around you again. The first day I said, I can't be around you again. I got a, a, a something through my body, and he was like, no, nah, you gonna see me again? I said, I can't. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I, so I knew I was not supposed to be tapping in, but I kept tapping. Kept tapping. Kept tapping, huh? Kept tapping. So, <laughs> I know you have an interesting way of telling your stories. It's entertaining, though. <laughs> um, how was he able to link up with you for that first time? I know it, it just started on Facebook, very cordial, very like high by, you know. Mm -hmm. And even that, that, this is why that's so dangerous. Mm -hmm. Even the, 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 the casual, hey, mm -hmm. you know, just mm -hmm. checking on light you. Light heart. Mm -hmm. The light heart, mm -hmm. it got that underlying. Just like and keep going. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how did it go <laughs> from the light heart to the kiss on the cheek? Um, we was texting. Mm -hmm. And he's a talker. So he's texting me every day. And husband at work ain't talking about nothing. You know, the bulls and the socks and the, I don't know nothing about that. I really don't care right now, you know, but he's calling me every day at work and we're talking every day, all day. And you feel it happening. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it got to a point where it's like, you know, hey, you you my um side husband. For real? Yeah. I ain't your side husband, you my side husband. Yeah. You feeling like that? Yeah. Yeah. So y'all yeah. finally link up and then you feel like you say, I don't I can't see you no more. What happens next? Okay, well, see, eh, eh, eh. um, whoopsie, I get pregnant. So wait, wait, how do we get there? <laughs> It's a never point a finger while three comes back to you, right? Because yeah. I was always a finger pointer. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I get pregnant. So I'm like, you know, hey, now I'm like, I got to cut it off. You know, I can't, I can't do this no more. I'm pregnant. And he was like, you know who the baby daddy is? I'm like, yeah, it's my, it's my husband. You know what I'm saying? He was like, no. I'm like, yeah, because from my recollection, you know, this is my, this is my first time cheating. So call me an idiot, I don't care. But this is my first time cheating, so I don't know how to check a condom. So you put, I just know that I'm actually put a condom on, you put one on. And this is the second guy you've ever been with yes, in your life. Yes, yes. So he's telling me I'm putting a condom on. I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> okay, okay, really quickly. So mm -hmm. from how much period of time elapsed? Did, did, how, many, how much time did y'all have sex before you could honestly say, or how long were y'all intimate? Before you could honestly say you came to him like, yo, I'm pregnant. Uh, we was doing it like every time we linked up. And we was linking up every weekend to every other day to every day. So what? it was, and honestly, I'm, I swear to God, I'm thinking it's a rubber on, you know? So now How I know- How does a man not know that this is what you're doing every day? Because he, his hours he worked and the hours I was supposed to work and the kids at school. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know what? You know what's crazy though? Because people are gonna watch it and they're gonna cast that finger that mm -hmm. you spoke about earlier with the three pointed back mm -hmm. at you. And they're gonna ignore the very reality of this. Mm -hmm. Especially in marriages, relationships, even in their own personal relationships. So it's just just keep in mind when we judge people and when we point that finger yeah. and we Take a look at your own life, yeah. you know, before you um, sort of pull the speck of exactly. dust out of someone's yeah. eye, pull the log out of your own. Yeah. All right. So y'all y'all hooking up every day. Y you're finally realizing, all right, yo, listen, I'm pregnant. He's like, well, whose baby is it? Mm -hmm. And then that's when he reveals to you that he's been taking mm -hmm. a condom off intentionally mm -hmm. trying to get you pregnant. Mm -hmm. How would you manage... Having sex with your husband and having sex with him. Well, she's something I got come on with you, and also I'm safe on here with you, you know. And then I tell my husband, you know, hey, I'm not in the mood right now. I'm tired, work, mm. the kids, you know, baby. Mm. Let me go ahead and rest my body, and I'll get back to you <laughs> later. I mean, you know, and that's what it was. Were you remorseful about? Hell yeah, I was. Okay. I mean, I told him the first thing that happened. Our pact and our agreement was in that marriage that anybody would step out, be honest. I told him so when I came home. The first time? The first time, the first night. I told him. What did he say? And he, he chuckled. He's like, oh. And I'm like, dude, I cheated. He ain't next with who. I was hoping he wouldn't. And he, I went and I said, I just cheated. And he didn't say nothing. I mean, he's just like, no, no, 
No, no, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. I'm like, yes, I did. No, you didn't. So you left it. I, hey, I told you. Hey, I'm, I'm safe. Okay. Yeah. Hey, remember that time I told yeah. you? All right. So fast forward back to he's he, he's telling you this. What's your reaction to him saying that he got you pregnant? What's his, what's your Shit, reaction? Shit, how the hell am I telling to my husband? The hell? The, what the what was I doing? What is going on? How do we get here? Y'all here? Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my. Oh my god. Oh my god. They been talk about me. Everybody. My mom finna be mad. I'm married. His, what I'm finna do? So it was like I'm finna abort this baby. I ain't finna tell nobody. I'm finna abort it. And I found it, the only person that knew at the time was my sister. And I told my mom. I started getting sick. And she was like, "We don't abort babies. You gonna keep that baby? This is a punishment. Keep that baby." And I kept that baby. Wow. Um, yeah, I feel like your mom must have been old school too, cause you know, so 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 many times we use abortions mm -hmm. as this like get out of jail free mm -hmm. card, when actually it's the consequence of mm -hmm. your your actions. It could be a gift if you look at it that way, or it could be mm -hmm. a consequence if you choose to look at it that way. But nonetheless, it was from your actions. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Whose baby was it? It was the husband's. Well, okay. I can't, I mean, shit, we ain't never do a paternity test. We just going off. <laughs> Fuck, we ain't no other. We're going off of looks. Okay. Who she looks like. Okay. And she looks like the other siblings, so we just say it's the husband's, you know? Um, but ain't no paternity test been done. Wait. And so the fiance took claim of her. So he, not that the husband denied her, but the fiance didn't have no kids. And he's like, you know, that's my baby. And, he, and it's been his baby since. Whose baby do you think it is? She is some days I'm like this person, some days I'm like that person. I don't know. Um, if I have to really say the ex-husband, cause she does resemble the other siblings. Um, so I would say the ex-husband. What did she think? I told her, and um, I said, you got two daddies, or two, you know, got a father and a daddy, you know, so she knows the whole dynamic. No one can ever step to her and say, well, how, you know, mm -hmm. she knows everything. She's going to correct them, if anything. But um, she just says, I know, and she loves them both equally. Right. She loves them both. Right. You know? How old was she when, when he passed? Eight. Wow. How long were you with your fiance? 10 years. And your ex-husband? Like 15, 15, 16. I could imagine that this created a disdain, especially for the fiance between your family, maybe your brothers, maybe your sister, for this guy that was able to remove you mm -hmm. from holy wedlock. Mm -hmm. How do you think that impacted them? A lot, they stopped talking to me. Mm. They was mad. Why would you leave your ex-husband like that? Why'd you do that? We ain't talking to you, right? And you over here messing with a whole street guy. What's wrong with you? You got kids. What's your answer? I love him. Shit, he make me feel the way he never made me feel. Like, I like to pick up, I know it's crazy, pick up rocks. I'm a nature person. I like rocks and leaves and grass and shit. I like to go outside and barefoot it. And I just collect little rocks. This nigga went to the store and bought me a bag of rocks. I'm like, <gasps> He's the one. <laughs> Not smoking rocks, but he bought me a bag of nature. Nigga. <laughs> you left your husband for a bag of rocks? <laughs> for, a, for a bag of rocks, yeah. Wow. No, but I understand what you're saying. Though. Yeah. On the, on the, he he looked at, he was paying attention to me. Mm. And I never, my, my ex husband never showed no signs of that. He just, I was a brat. Whatever you want to get. I, we was married five years. I got five wit rings up out of him. Sorry, but not sorry. Everything I want, he gave it to me. This one, he was studying me. Hey, 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 hey. Mm -hmm. Look at me, why you on your period yet? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, he knew everything. He watched everything. Mm -hmm. Why you got a pimple right there? What's going on? You stressed what you eat? You know, so I love that. He was very attentive to me. Little things. He, the littlest things. Was your husband cheating on you as well? No, he wasn't, but he probably was. I'm not going to sit here and be naive, but from my speculation, spec, uh, sp from my understanding, no, yeah. no. He was really a cool cat, a cool guy. And you don't have any regret about moving on? Um, looking at it now, best decision I ever made.
Why? Because looking at it now, eight and a half years later, he's still the same place I left him. And I'm just trying to keep going to the top with our children. Hmm. Do you believe in karma? Of course. Of course. Yeah, I said, God, <laughs> this is my karma for cheating on that damn husband. You had to take someone I really loved the most. Yeah. Wow. And you understand that? Mm hmm. You told me it's so intense, the grief, the grief, that you still sleep with the clothes he wore, the shoes he wore, the cologne he wore, even the drink that he had mm -hmm. the night he died. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I can't let it go. It's like he's sitting, sitting in the bed next to me. So it's my shoes that I had on, actually, with his blood on it. It's um, my clothes with his blood stain. It's his toothbrush, his drink that he had that night, his cologne, and a picture of him. And um, at first, up to like maybe some weeks ago, do say time. I work night shift, 12 hour shifts. So when I get home, do say time, and I call him Gray. Come on, Gray, we finna kick it. And me and that, all them items, be right there in that room. Drinking, smoking, then we travel to the car. Let's hit it. So, yeah. Hmm. He even brought his jacket with you. Yeah. Talk to me about what it was like being with him. <laughs> A roller coaster, baby. It was up and down, up and down. It was up and down. It was um, crazy love, for real. It was really crazy love. Um, no matter how much we tried to let each other go, we just kept coming back. And he would tell me, like, we can't, we can't be together. But we can't stay away from each other. I'm like, I know. Fuck, we might as well make it work. We might as well make it work. I'm like, you're right. You're right, you know, because he don't hurt me so much. I don't hurt him. He don't call everybody in mama. To this day, some people mad at me. Well, he called me before up until you know, something happened to him. You, 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 you. He hurt me. I hurt him. You know, everybody got their own story. Everybody got their own little thing. This is our thing. This is how we did it, you know, and that's what it was. On my birthday, we told nobody. When we got back together, we told nobody. We just kind of moved in silence, you know. Um, I'm back to doing the things I was doing with him 10 years ago. Being that girl riding the car with him, going up and down the street jugging, you know, listening to Scooter and Future, smoking, you know. So now I'm back into something that's what I didn't want to do, but I'm like, hey, we need to be married. We need to woo woo woo. I need you to be working. Okay. He started working on it. You know, by your birthday, I'm going to marry you. Okay, bet. And we, it was the working. Started to work. Like, it was starting to finally make sense. All this time I'm putting into you, nigga, you put into me. Now it's starting to finally make sense. Like, I'm finally, I'm finally there. He even got locked up while you yeah. were still married? Hell yeah. That's when I um, ended up, I had the baby girl when he was locked up. Yeah. And he's like, give her my last name. And I'm like, I can't. I'm married. I got my people over here saying she got to take the husband's last name. He said, you better give her my last name. What'd you do? The other kids had to, I kept this as a, the same. I gave her the ex-husband last name. <sighs> this is a lot. This is a lot. How do you... How do you move on from this? How long ago was the incident? November 2023. That was months ago. Mm -hmm. This just happened. And some people say you're moving fast. But I say if justice was served, I'd be okay. And I'm not pointing no fingers. I'm just saying we all, those who was there, they know. So, um... I got to move when the spirit tells me, so I'm moving. That's right. How are you going to move on? Were you able to move on? I don't know. I'm still battling. I told me and God, we can have a straight going at it. Why you ain't taking me? 
even if I was suicidal, I'm fit taking me and the kids. It's gonna go down. Oh. My family said to bury four. They for the bury four. My sister had to watch me for a little bit. Suicidal watch, cause I, it was going down. I'd get everybody was gonna make me laugh. I had thought about the plan, everything. They wanted to put me on all kind of medicines. I'm a bubbly person, but since it's incident, it creeps out and copes. It sinks back in. But I, I can't do medicine. I don't want to lose exactly who I am. I already lost a big piece of me. So, what stops you from uh, following out with these plans? I do think about my kids, right. and I would like, you know, they need me, right. and I love them, and they love me. Yeah. They don't show me what some real love is, you know. They took the trip with you. Yeah, they yeah. take my road dogs. I know. Yeah. You got too much to live for. Yeah. Are you seeking counseling or anything? I go, but because of my shift at work, I go when I can go, but it's not consistent. Right. So right now, I try to get more into the Bible, try to talk to God. We kind of got a little understanding now. You know, I try to go to church more, understand what I'm listening to, you know, learn how to deal with people, learn when to talk and not to talk, you know, learn to really listen to that gut feeling, mm. you know? Something you would tell your younger self? <laughs> it's okay to be different. It's okay to not always want to talk to people, be friendly, and it's okay to sometimes not give all your best and be a people pleaser, and just to love you, love you. That's all you need. That's what I would have told myself. Any regrets? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. With many. What are they? I wish I could turn back that day. I wish I could turn back the hands of time. I wish when my fiance said, let me put my, my money in your wallet or my wallet in your purse. No, we ain't going because I don't hold this money. You don't let me hold nothing. I wish I would have never picked up my brother, told him to stay at home working out with the kids. I wish I would have went home and laid down what I planned on to. Those are my regrets. Say what you want about your story. But I think you've experienced that love, right? Mm -hmm. Like the, 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 that real, I don't know, agape love. It could be a trauma bond. I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, because there was a lot of tumultuous things going on. Mm -hmm. But just the way you speak of him, um, I just, I don't know. I just feel like a lot of people wish they could encounter somebody yeah. that they, you know, love that much yeah you know what i mean oh people knew i loved them they yeah. knew i was crazy about him yeah and ditto they knew it they knew it. that's just why they said girl you, you can't get yourself together when you're around him mm. i could i didn't want to work i didn't want to do nothing mm. yeah mm. do you, you don't feel like that kind of stunted your growth that kind of held you back yeah. a little bit yeah and we both said it he said you stop me and i stop you he said we're away from each other we're growing when we're together we just yeah. We ain't, we, we striving, you know, yeah. and he's right, but we, we couldn't stay away. Yeah. We couldn't. It was a crazy, like, Romeo, Juliet type of love. It was crazy. Maybe one day you'll understand why this happened? Hmm. Maybe. Oh, I know. God said, I need you to go further. He said, some things I want to show you. I might have to take some things away from you because you ain't getting it. You ain't getting it. But I'm going to show you and you're going to get there. Just keep doing my deed, keep doing my job so I know it's a purpose. And that's why I'm going to keep his name going. It's a, I know it's a purpose. You know, because I'll be supposed, I was supposed to be way further off. I call myself a billionaire. But, you know, and I was living like a 50 cent there. <laughs> okay? In the air. Okay. <laughs> this is Trevor Anonymous. My name is Chris Styles. Let's get it.